Hello to all of you. I, Dr. Deep Kumar Shvastho. I again welcome to all. Welcome to all of you in my class. This is the survey. Today's topic: correction in chain and tape measurement. Dear boy, when we are doing survey. When we are doing survey, on that time, so many mistakes have been made. We cannot feel. So we will discuss about that today on the that topic. So first, what is the objective of this correction? in chain survey chain survey is the simplest method of surveying it is the exercise of physically measuring horizontal distance in this method the length of lines marked on the field are measured while the detail are measured by the offset and tie of From these lines, so it means uh, when we have start the survey. So due to some unknowingly position, the simplest method of it is the exercise of physical measuring horizontal distance. In this method, the length. of line mark on the field are measured while the detail are measured by the offsets and ties from the line so chain survey is the simplest method of the survey it is the exercise of physically measuring horizontal distance in this method the length of line mark on the field are measured while the detail are measured by offset and tie from these lines this field work will continue for we held our this is most suitable adopted small plane area with very few Okay. So, about the, the tape correction. To cite the measurement of the distance is made by mean of the steel tape, thirty meter or fifty meter length. Before use, at this desirable. Extent it is actual length, absolute length, by comparing it with the standard of known length, which can be done for a small fee by the survey and standard dependent. It is well to note here the distinction between the. Normal for definition length and absolute length of tape by the former is meant it is the designated length that is the thirty meter or hundred meter while by the latter is meant is actually length under specified condition so. the tape may standardize when supported horizontally throughout it is a full length or in cadence the expression that a tape is the standard at a certain temperature at the under of the certain pull means that under each condition the actual length of the tape is exactly equal to its normal 
limb. So since the tape is not used in the field under the standard condition, it is necessary to apply the following correction to the measured length of a line in order to obtain a true length. So we'll discuss on the correction. It is a method of surveying in which the area is divided into network of triangles and slight of the various triangles are measured directly in the field with a chain or a tape and no angular measurement are so it is seen in this uh, video clip. What it is has done in this lecture. This is a video clip. Hi, welcome to Tech Lectures. This is Katie Vikarendi, and in this video, we are going to learn all about chain surveying. These are all the topics that I am going to discuss in this video. So let us see the basic definition of the surveying. This is the simplest and oldest form of land surveying in which only linear measurements are taken. Okay. So in which the whole area is divided into a network of triangles and trapezoids. Next, situations when chain survey is adopted, when large scale mapping is desired. Okay. So the scale of the map is very less. Okay. So you can go over uh, or maps, etc. But if at all if you want the scale is larger, okay. So in that case, you have to prefer chain surveying. Okay, usually land surveying is preferred in such a case only. Especially chain surveying is preferred when the area to be surveyed is small, when the ground is flat with uh, no much. less accurate okay that's the reason why it is adopted only when the area is small and even if the ground is flat without much undulations or up and downs next purpose of chain survey okay so the purpose of any survey is to prepare the plan or a map okay to calculate the area of the plot to collect the necessary data for exact description of the land, to demarket the boundaries for division of land into smaller units. Okay. Next, the principle of chain survey. This is very important. The basic principle of chain survey is triangulation, okay, in which a plot is divided into a number of triangles and trapezoids, and especially the triangles are to be well conditioned triangles such that no angle, no interior angle of the triangle is less than 30 degrees and none is more than 120 degrees. It means the three interior angles inside any triangle must lie between 30 degrees and 120 degrees. Such triangles are called as well conditioned triangles. If any angle is less than 30 or more than 120, that triangle is called as ill conditioned triangle. Okay. So the basic principle of chain survey is triangulation. Triangulation is the process of division of an area into number of triangles and trapezoids. So individually, the area of each figure is found. Okay. So here you can see the pentagon. A, B, C, D, E, A. Okay, so the pentagon has been divided into three triangles like this. So individually the triangular areas are formed and finally they are all sum up or added up to get the total area. Okay, so this is how the chain survey is carried out. And these are all the instruments used in the chain survey. Let us discuss each about them individually. Okay. So the chain, okay, this is an instrument used for measuring distance, okay, there are various types of chains here, okay, so here a few chains are uh, appears to be similar, but it varies in the lengths and the number of links, okay, so the first chain is metric chain, it is available in 
5, 10, 20, and 30 meters. Okay. Next, Gunters or Surveyor's Chain. It is 66 feet long and of 100 lengths. Next, Engineer's Chain. It is of 100 feet long and 100 lengths. Next, Revenue Chain. 33 feet long and 16 lengths. Next, Steel Band or Band Chain. It appears to be like this. It is available in this lens. 20 meters or 30 meters. Lens. Okay. So this is the metric chain as we have already seen it is available in various lengths like 5 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters etc. Okay, so it is made with galvanized steel wire of 4 mm diameter. Each meter is divided into 5 inches of 20 centimeters each. Okay, so here you can see. Okay, so this is the handle. Similarly on the other end of this chain we have another brass handle like this. So here we can see, so on the two ends of the chain, you have two brass handles with swivel joint, okay? Here we can see a swivel joint, okay? It means if you rotate this, this chain won't turn, only this will turn, okay? So that kind of joint is called a swivel joint, okay? So, five links comprises of one meter length, okay? So the length is to be measured from end to end, okay? It means that the length also includes the length of the handle, okay? So the length is to be measured from this end till the other end, okay? So from here to here, the length is to be measured, okay? So here uh, the 20 meter chain has been shown, okay? So 20 meters is from the end of the handle till the end, okay? So the length is to be measured from end to end, okay? And each link length is 20 centimeters, okay, like that 5 links is equal to 1 meter, okay, so 20 centimeters like that, this is 20, this is 20 like that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, so till from here to here, this is 1 meter, and at 1 meter, you have a ring like this, a brass ring, and after 5 meters, 10 meters, and 50 meters, you have tallies like this. Okay, here you can see. Okay, so if a tally has a single projection like this, a single nosing kind of thing like this, that tally will be at a length of 5 meters on the chain. Okay, so if it has two projections like this, that will be the tally at 10 meters length. Okay, so if the same tally is having three projections like this, okay, so that will be at the 15 meters length, okay, so that's the thing. If it is having one projection, it means it is at 5 meters length, okay, if it is having two projections like this, it is at 10 meters length, if it is having three projections like this, that is at the 15 meters length, okay. So, why these tallies and brass rings are provided in the sense? In order to calculate the length with ease, okay? In order to calculate the length in an easy manner, these tallies and rings are provided from chain. Okay. Next, tape. Similar to the chains, tapes are also of many kinds based upon the material with which they are made of. Okay, cloth or linen tapes, okay, steel tapes, linoir tapes, okay, fiberglass tapes, metallic tapes, like that, without various types of tapes are available. Okay, so these are also used to measure the length. Okay. Next, ranging rods. Okay, so the ranging rods appears to be like this, and offset rod appears to be like this. The only difference is the offset rod is similar to ranging rod, but Instead of the flat, it will be having a hook, okay? Here it is having a flat and here it is having a hook, okay? It is not a must that the rating board should always having a flat like this. If you want, if you are doing survey for a longer area, for a wider area, okay? So you have to use flags like this. Otherwise, you can, you can use the normal rating board, okay? So the height of the rating board will be to three meters, okay, and it will have alternate bands of black or white or red colors, okay, and each band length.
similar is 20 centimeters okay and the hook provided from the offset rod is to pull or push the chain okay this hook next cross tap okay cross tap is an instrument used for setting perpendicular offset okay so for suppose a line is there in order to set a perpendicular line to that line okay so that perpendicular line is called as offset in the chain survey terminology okay so in order to set that you can use the cross tab okay so you have different types of cross tabs okay this is called open cross tab this is called as french cross tab and this is called as adjustable cross tab okay so basically offset is not the perpendicular okay offsets are of different types okay perpendicular offsets are there and oblique offsets are there perpendicular offset means it is making 90 degrees angle with the line okay so with the open cross tab we can only form the lines which are perpendicular to the existing base lines or any survey line okay and here using french cross tab you can even along with the 90 degrees angle line you can even set a line of 45 degrees angle okay and here using adjustable cross tab you can set any angle okay between two lines okay next arrows okay these are used for marking the ends of the chain during the process of chaining so these are of 400 mm okay 40 centimeters length okay and they are circular at the top okay, in order to handle them okay the diameter will be 50 mm that means 5 centimeters appears to be like this and it is made up of black enamel steel next to pegs and plumber okay so pegs are of timber and even of steel okay so the length varies from 120 to 600 mm these are driven into the ground to mark the instrument stations okay next plumber okay it appears to be like this it is used to define the vertical line while measuring the distance along the slopes okay so it represents just <coughs> the verticality <coughs> suppose if you insert a ranging rod somewhere okay so it may bend also due to some air or something okay in order to check the verticality you can use the plumber and even it is used to check the verticality of the lines okay while chaining across the slopes next instrument used for setting out right angles okay so far we have seen the cross tabs, not only the cross tabs, we have a few more instruments using which we can set the right angles. Okay, so cross tab we have already seen. So optical square, prism square, and side square. Okay, using these instruments also, we can set the right angles to a line. Next, terminology used in chain survey. Okay, so let us move ahead. So main stations, okay, here we can see the main stations are the stations taken along the boundary of an area, okay. So here we can see A, B, C and D, okay, these are called as the main stations or main survey stations, okay. So these are along the boundary of the area, okay. And the lines joining the main stations are called as main survey lines. Okay, so the lines A, B, B, C, C, D, and A, D. Okay, these lines are called as main survey lines. Okay, next subsidiary stations. Okay, so the stations which are on the main survey lines or any other survey lines are known as subsidiary stations. Okay, so these are represented by s1 and s2 over here okay so these are joining the main line main survey line which is also called as a baseline with the apex of the triangles or the main survey stations okay so here 
the S1 is drawn from the main service station C onto the baseline and S2 has been drawn from the main service station A onto the baseline. Okay, so these are drawn to divide the entire plot into triangles or trapezoids. Next, tile stations. These are also subsidiary stations taken on the main service stations. Okay, tile lines are taken to locate the interior details. So this here we can see the T1 and T2. This was the T1 and T2 are the tile stations and the line joining two tile stations are called as tile lines. These are all taken to locate the interior details inside the plot. Next, main survey lines are the lines which are joining the main survey stations and baseline. Okay, this is the main line. Okay, along which, about which the framework of the survey is set. Okay, so here TD is the baseline. Next, check line, tie line. Okay, so the check line is CS1 and AS2. Okay. So usually those are the lines which are joining the main stations with the subsidiary stations. Okay. So these are all the terminology in chain surveying. Let us move ahead. Operations in chain surveying. Okay. So these three are the main operations that involve in the chain surveying. Okay. The first one is chaining, ranging, and offsetting. Okay. So these operations are not separately done, okay? These three are simultaneously done in the chain surveying. Okay, let us uh, learn about them. So the first one is chaining, okay? So the chaining involves the following operations, okay? So basically the chaining is taking measurement with the help of chain or tape, okay? If you want to measure the length with the help of chain or a tape, Okay, that process is called as chaining. Okay, the chaining involves the following operations. Okay, first of all, you have to fix the stations, the main stations, and the subsidiary stations, and after that, you have to unfold the chain and you have to do the ranging for straightening of the line. After that, you have to measure the distance and finally folding the chain. Okay, so in the process of chaining, Range in came okay like that okay simultaneously these processes are run in the chain survey. Next okay chaining fixing the station okay so so far we have seen the station the types of station those are marked with the pinks and ranging rows okay so unfolding the chain okay so in order to open a chain first of all we have to fold the two brass handles in the left hand. And the entire bunch of the chain is to be held in the right hand and it is to be thrown forward in order to open it. Okay. And we have to do the ranging and finally we have to fold the chain after measuring the lens. Next. Ranging. Okay. So this is the process of establishing intermediate points on a straight line. Okay, so if there are two points, for suppose A and B, if you join those two points with any line, that line will be a straight line. But if you join three points with the line, that line may not be a horizontal line. Okay, in order to make it horizontal, that means in order to bring the third point in line with AB, we have to do the ranging. And this ranging is of two types okay direct ranging and indirect ranging okay direct ranging is again of two types that is ranging by i and the second one is ranging by line ranger let us see the first one ranging by the i okay so here you can see a b are the two main stations and c is one subsidiary station such that C is to be in line with A and B. So in order to bring the point C or the station C in line with the line AB, we have to do the ranging. Okay. So the person over here has to guide this person 
in order to bring this ranging rod on to the line AB. Okay, this process is called as ranging. Okay, and not not only the one point you can bring n number of points on to the line AB. Okay, so after the C, another point D has been brought on to the line AB. Okay, here I can see. In the region, so here you can see these two persons are very far apart. Okay, so in order to guide this person such that he has to bring this ranging rod exactly in the line with AB. Okay, he has to use some hand gestures in order to guide this person. Okay, so those hand gestures are listed in this table. Okay, so the signal by the surveyor. And what does it mean? Okay, so these are all the hand gestures. Okay, so rapid sweep with the right hand. Okay, so let us see the first one rapid sweep with the right hand. Okay, which means more considerable towards left. Okay, so it means that, okay, so if you sweep the right hand, how can it be more towards left? Okay, you are showing right hand, but you are asking the other person to move the left. Okay, so how, how it happens in the sense, okay, if you see, if you observe carefully, the right hand of this person will be opposite to the left hand of this person, okay. So the right hand side of this person will be the left hand side of this person, okay. So in this we have to realize, okay, we once realize this, then we can be able to understand this hand gestures very easily, okay. So, next, both hand above the head and brought down, okay, if you take both hands above the head and brought down, it means that reigning is correct, okay, so the reigning right has been brought to the exact place, okay, so now both are extended horizontally and brought down, it means that fixed the reigning right over that place, okay, like this. Next, the second one is ranging by line ranger. Okay, so line ranger is a light and easy instrument which can be used for ranging. Okay, so the direct ranging itself instead of a naked eye, okay, ranging with the eye, you can do the ranging with the line ranger. Okay, so it consists of two plane mirrors. Okay, place one above the other. Okay, so two mirrors are placed one above the other, okay. So the upper prism is mobile and the lower prism is fixed, okay. So this lower prism is fixed and the upper prism is mobile, okay. So suppose if you want to range these two points, okay. So you have to place the ranging rod at point C and you have to see through this, okay. So if at all the range, the ranging, okay, the line ranger is at the exact point on the line AB, okay. So the two ranging rods at point A and point B appears to be like this. Those two ranging rods form a single vertical line. Otherwise, they are far apart like this. They are separated like this, okay. So you have to move either away or towards this line or either this way or that way such that somehow you have to reach a point such that if you see through this line right here these two ranging rods present at A and B it should appear like this in this manner okay? those two ranging rods must form a single vertical line like this okay so like this using line right here you can do the ranging okay so next, so here we can see, so we have to take the, use the line ranger like this, okay, so you can view both ranging rods through this, okay, if they are separated, you have to move such that, okay, those two ranging rods form a single vertical line like this.
Next, indirect ranging or reciprocal ranging. Okay. Suppose if the land is not flat. Okay. So as we have already discussed, that chains are made not adopted, fully adopted for an area where high undulations or up and downs are there. Okay. Here you can see. Okay, because of this, okay, some kill guy something, you can't able to see the other end of the line AB. Okay, so we were at point A and you could not able to see the ranging rod at B. Okay, so in such a case, you can't go for the direct ranging. In such a case, we have to do the indirect ranging. Okay, how exactly it is to be done? Okay, so here you can see. Okay, so in this, two points M1 and M1 are to be selected such that from M1, both M1 and A should be appear and from M1, both M1 and B must appear. Okay, so in this manner, first of all, we have to set or the select the points. M1 and M1. Okay. So now the person, so the person at M1, okay, directs the person at M1 such that the M1, the ranging rod at M1 should come onto the line AM1. Okay. So first of all, here a ranging rod is fixed and here another ranging rod is fixed, okay? So here two persons will be there holding the ranging rods, okay? So the person at M1 guides the person at M1 such that the ranging rod come on to the line A M1, okay? So now this ranging rod will be fixed over here and this person guides this person such that this ranging rod come on to the line M to B. Okay. Next, this ranging rod will be fixed over here. And again, this person will guide the person over here such that the ranging rod is to be placed next on the line A M Q. Okay, like that. Towards the line. So uh, you have seen uh, how the error of the chain and how the condition of the chain and this is the picture of the chain so you have seen in detail and now uh, this picture you have, you have seen this is the 20 meter chain and this is a 30 meter chain and i think there is no uh, <coughs> correction between the this uh, 5 10 and 15 meter distance so principle of chain survey just you have seen the practical the chain of surveying to divide the area into a number of triangle of a suitable side. As a triangle is the only simple plane of the geometrical figure, which can be plotted from the length of the three side even in the angle or not known. A network is a triangle, triangulation is the prepared the chain survey. If the area to be surveyed is the triangular the shape and the line length and the sequence of it. So three sides of the recorded plane of the area can be easily drawn. This time you have seen this in video clip and uh, now survey station. So survey station at the point at the beginning and the, at the end of the churn line. They may also occur the convenient position on the chain line, such as the station may be main station, subsidiary station, and tie station. So, so we will study on the main station, the station taken along the boundary of an area as controlling point known as the main station. The line joining the main station are called main survey line. The main survey line should be covered. The whole area of the survey survey the main station denoted by delta, by letter of A, B, C, D, E. This is the station position and subsidiary station. 
station which are one of the main survey line on the another survey line are known as the subsidiary station and these station are taken to run subsidiary line for the dividing to the area into triangle for the checking the accuracy of the triangle and for locating interior detail and these station are denoted by the with the letter s1 s2 s3 and etc the tile station so these are also subsidiary station taken on the main survey line and joining the line tile station known as the line so tile line are taken to locate the interior detail the station are denoted by the with the letters t1 t2 t3 and etc so many survey lines the line joining the main station are called main survey line or chain line in figure a b b c c d and line so this is the clear position of the lines how it will be do hello everyone welcome to tips and tricks today we are going to see the types of errors and so six error has come so uh, coming to the types of errors there are three main errors they they are the human error systematic error and accidental error human errors are the mistakes committed by uh, the humans while taking the reading from an observing instrument next is systematic errors systematic errors are the errors are uh, committed by the manufacturers while manufacturing any surveying instrument if a tape is said to be uh, 20 meters long but in uh, actual it is only 19.5 meters long so uh, every time a person uses this tape to measure something uh, he or she tends to make a mistake in the uh, in the distance he has covered so this type of error is called systematic error so every time he uses the tape the uh, error keeps accumulating so this type of error is called as cumulative error it will be either only positive or only negative so next is accidental error accidental errors are called as compensating errors compensating errors uh, they they are both positive and negative so uh, as the name suggests they tend to compensate each other and accidental errors are directly proportional to the number of uh, observations that has been taken so while we are talking about the errors uh, there are two main uh, definitions that one should know the first one is most probable value so most probable value as the name suggests is uh, the value that has more chances of being correct than the other values so uh, it can be found using uh, this uh, small formula where uh, we uh, add all the residual errors together and which set of observations produces the least amount of residual errors is called as the most probable value residual errors are nothing but square of the errors say there are three sets of observations uh, and we find the uh, uh residual errors for every uh, set of observation the uh, observation which has the least number of uh, uh, summation will be called as the most probable value the next uh, definition that one should know is most probable error so in every set of observations um, the standard error is uh, likely to happen 50 percentage of the time it can be numerically represented as uh, as is equal to plus or minus 0.675 times standard deviation if this uh, decimal value is critical for you to keep in mind you can always go for 2 by 3 times of standard deviation the standard deviation is uh, the square root of summation of v divided by n minus 1 where v is a single observation minus the mean value of the observations. So uh, from this we will find the standard deviation, from it we will find the um, a probable error of a single observation. Say we have to find the probable error of the mean. Uh, so to find the probable error of the mean, we will go use the formula ES divided by root n, where n is the number of observations. Thank you so much for watching. Now uh, this is the baseline. So the line on which the framework of the survey is the viewed and known as the baseline, and it is the most important line of the survey 
So generally, the longest of the main survey line is considered as the baseline. So this line should be measured very carefully. And accordingly, the PD is the base top line. This is the PD. This is the B and D. This is the baseline. In the clear picture, it is given baseline. So the line joining apex point of the triangle to some of the fixed point on its baseline is known as the check line. And it is taken to check the accuracy of the triangle. And some thing with the slide is helped to the locate interior detail in figures PS1, PS2 or the check lines. So what is the tie line? A line joining the station is learning at the line. It is the run to take the interior detail which are for the away from the main line and also to be avoid long offset and it can also serve the check line in figure T1, T2 is the tie line. So this is the procedure. You can see this is the procedure. Fix the station A and B and some distance by the fixing wooden pad that determines the horizontal distance between them. So position of the station A and B is fixed by the measuring their position from at the least three permanent objects. And location of the sketch of the station A and B are drawn. The follower hold on the handle of the chain in contact with peg at the station A. The leader of take and other handle of the chain, the arrow are ranging rod and walk in the forward direction, dragging chain with him. So after the chain is stretched completely along the line, the follower step on the side at the line with the ranging of the touching the headline. Now the flower, the follower direct the leader to stand exactly in the line. The leader put his stretch and the position then set at the arrow. She then moves forward with the chair handle with the remaining arrow and ranging rod till forever reach the next arrow point. So chain survey, so depiction the chain survey in a kind of survey which are concurred in the determining the linear position and the two point of the survey are. So there are two methods of the determining the distance in two point of the survey is the R. So direct measurement, in this case, the distance are directly measured by mean of the chain tape. And indirect, in this case, distance are determined by calculating the triangulation traversing. Now we have come instrument for the measuring D. The material of compression for the horizontal distance directly tape, either metallic tape, steel tape, cloth tape, plastic tape, steel bend, surveyor bend, chains, and measuring base, and EDM, this is electronic distance of machine. Now, distance horizontal, that is take station, packing rod, a circular section of two meter by diameter or three meter pointed with the are red and white. Peg, this is the either wooden or steel, which is either circular or the square with length of 30 centimeter. Tripod, the hard of the pivot, four trapped. We use the support of the ranging port and plumb up. This is the youth transfer and the point and the chain where measuring distance the release terrain. It is also systematically ranging and leveling, etc. So this is the diagram. You can see this is the EDM. This is the tape. This is the peg. This is the plumb bob. So principle of chaining in most of engineering survey, the steel band is used. So it is the major the length of the line, which is the greater than length of the steel band. The following principle should be followed. So person is needed a chain. That is with the two chain men. Leader chain men with the ranging rod and peg. And follower chain men with who is the recording measurement optional. So this is the example of the example one and example two. Example one, the length of line 
reach it 800 meter and length up to measure a distance. This is the measuring system procedure. So correction applied to the steel tapping error, systematic error in tapping are due to incorrect tape length, tape not horizontal, and frictional temperature of the tape. Correction applied to the steel tapping error, incorrect transit of the pole, sag tape, incorrect alignment, and tape not straight. So this is the calculation. This is the calculation and the calculation. The are all calculation of the computed of chain uh, correction. And one thing, correction of the standard length. So if you have given a tape for the measuring a length at the fixed before using the tape, its actual length should be asserted by the company it was the standard tape known as length. So correction of the standard length that is the normal length of a tape it is a designated length that is 30 meter or 100 meter. The float length of the tape is its actual length under the specified condition. So the absolute length of the tape is seldom and equal to the normal length of the tape. So degree of accuracy in the chain, some condition appearing accuracy are fitness of the graduation of the chain, nature of the ground, time of the money of the available, whether etc. application of the chain serving, the main purpose of chain serving to carry out the following purpose. The degree of accuracy to have the necessary data to eject the dispersion, the boundary of the plot of the hand to determine the area of the plot of the uh, ten land, the prepare accurate plan of the plot of the land to determine the boundary of the plot of the land which is previously surveyed to derive the plot of the land into number of smaller units. So the degree of accuracy in the chaining, some condition affecting the accuracy or fitness to graduation the chain and nature of the ground, time and money of level, whether etc. and application of chain surveying. Technical term and definitor. Some of the most technical terms which are used in the application of the chain surveying are main survey station, the principle of chain surveying, divide the area into the number of triangle and main survey line, the chain line joining two main stations. So this is the detail of the book. And this is a very nice example. Hi, welcome to Tech Lectures. This is Katie Vikarati. And in this video, we are going to learn all about chain surveying. These are all the topics that I am going to discuss in this video. So let us see the basic definition of the surveying. This is the simplest and oldest form of plan surveying in which only linear measurements are taken. Okay, so in which the whole area is divided into a network of triangles and trapezoids. Next, situations when chain survey is adopted, when large scale mapping is desired. Okay, so if the scale of the map is very less. Okay, so you can go for uh, maps, etc. But if at all if you want the scale is larger. Okay, so in that case, you have to prefer chain surveying. Okay, usually land surveying is preferred in such a case only. Especially chain surveying is preferred when the area to be surveyed is small, when the ground is flat with uh, no much undulations and all. Okay, why? Because the chain surveying is less accurate. Okay, that's the reason why it is adopted only when the area is small and even if the ground is flat without much animations or patterns. Next, purpose of chain survey. Okay, so the purpose of any survey is to prepare the plan or a map. Okay, to calibrate the area of the plot, to collect the necessary data for exact description of the land, to demarcate the boundaries, for division of land into smaller units. Next, principle of chain survey. This is very important. The basic principle of chain surveying is triangulation, okay, in which a plot is divided into a number of triangles and trapezoids, and especially the triangles are to be well.
well conditioned triangles such that no angle, no interior angle of the triangle is less than 30 degrees and none is more than 120 degrees. It means the three interior angles inside any triangle must lie between 30 degrees and 120 degrees. Such triangles are called as well conditioned triangles. If any angle is less than 30 or more than 120, that triangle is called as ill-conditioned triangle. Okay. So the basic principle of chain surveying is this. triangulation. Triangulation is the process of division of an area into number of triangles and trapezoids. So individually, the area of each figure is found. Okay. So here you can see the pentagon. A, B, C, D, E, A. Okay, so the pentagon has been divided into three triangles like this. So individually the triangular areas are formed and finally they are all sum up or added up to get the total area. Okay, so this is how the chain surveying is carried out. And these are all the instruments used in the chain survey. Let us discuss each about them individually. Okay. So the chain. Now, uh, this, is, this is subsidiary survey line, subsidiary survey station. The station is selected on the main survey line of the running uh, auxiliary lines, subsidiary survey line. It is a chain line going the main survey station and subsidiary survey station. Best line is the longest of the many survey line, check line to check the accuracy of the field. It is a measured length of the check line agree with the scale of the plan the survey accurate. This is the plan and its calculation. So offset the position of the detail that is the boundary, road, church, stream, beds and are located with the respect of the chain time to time measuring the distance right of the left of the chain lines. Such latest measurements are called offset. There are two kinds of offset. So perpendicular offset and oblique offset. When the latest measurement are the perpendicular to the chain line, oblique offset, when the lateral measurement are made by the angle to the chain line. This is the diagram of that. So measurement of perpendicular, then offset or generally measurement, either metallic or steel tip, depending on the accuracy required the survey. So for the a pre offset of the following information, had to hook the distance along the chain line chain. Now this is the cross here, right of the engine, and the French cross stop, this is the adjustable cross stop, and this is the adjustable cross head, example of the procedure of the open crest stop. So, now my lecture has end. This is MCQ. Uh, this is which is the following H caused answer, answer systematic error. A system will be error free, uh, revoked to the all systematic error. Answer. B false. A negative deflection shows the magnetic condition to tell me so western side of the true magnetic. A series of the closely fit contour line of the represent a answer a stay slow. So a telescope is said invented its what it mean? A word, answer A, vertical circle to the right and the bubble of the telescope is down. An angle of the 45 is the chain of the many we set out function C. So, French course staff. Now, MCQ level is what is answer? Answer B, line parallel. To the mean to the critical surface of the earth. It's the cap of the fitted with a answer 
magnetic compass. Along the slope of the correction to the light of E30 meter chain length, what is the answer? Answer E30 second. So this is the reference book name. Thank you for listening my lecture. Thank you for enjoying my class. You are welcome by next class. Okay.